without further ado, the first talk this morning is by our beloved kernel maintainer, Ben Hatchens, about help the kernel team to help you. Hi. So, uh, <laughs> as Michael said, I'm one of the kernel maintainers. I've been on the kernel team for about ten, ten years now. Um, so I'm going to talk about what uh, Debian users and developers, developers can do when interacting with the kernel team uh, to um, make us more effective, more able to uh, to deal with the requests quickly. We're quite busy. Uh, there are about a dozen people on the kernel team, but. Uh, most of us have other responsibilities within Debian, uh, and uh, most of us are not paid to work on Debian either, so we only have a few hours a week to spend on it. Uh, we get a constant stream of bug reports, uh, some of which we can handle, some of which uh, unfortunately we can't. Uh, so there's a large backlog of bug reports uh, that uh, probably won't get f uh, dealt with in Debian. They might get fixed upstream, but um, we won't get to them. So one of the first things you can do uh, to make to make our life easier is report bugs upstream. Uh, if you're running a recent kernel, um, and that doesn't have to be absolutely the the latest version that Linux released yesterday. Uh, any version in testing unstable or experimental or uh, the current most recent backport suite should be recent enough. If you're running a, one of those versions, then the upstream kernel developers will probably be quite pleased to receive your bug report. Uh, some subsystems in the kernel use a bug tracker like Bugzilla, uh, and many do not. They just want bug reports directly to their development mailing list. There's a file documentation file called maintainers, uh, which we package. You can find it in the Linux doc package, and that lists for each area of the kernel uh, the email addresses of maintainers, the uh, the address of any relevant development mailing list, and in some cases, it will say that there's a, they use the bug tracker, uh, this URL. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't report the bug in Debian as well. If you report the bug in Debian and, and upstream, then use the f standard forwarded command uh, to link them together. And we should then be able to see uh, status changes if you, if you report it in bugs that are upstream. Uh, secondly, report bugs with the right information. The uh, kernel packages that we build include some hook scripts for the report bug command, so it can gather some diagnostic information, and we generally expect that if you're reporting a bug that is about, uh, this doesn't work on my machine, um, then we want some diagnostic information about your machine. Uh, running some commands that you thought might be useful uh, is not uh, usually not as good as running all the diagnostic commands that uh, that are in these scripts. So the right way to report a bug in the currently running kernel is just report bug kernel. Report bug knows how to look up the correct package for that. And otherwise, you should report against the specific uh, versioned uh, package. For example, Linux image 4.9.0-6.amv64 would be the current kernel package if you're running uh, Stretch uh, on a 64-bit PC. Don't file bugs against meta packages uh, like Linux image AMB64 because those are basically just some metadata saying this is the current version of the kernel and you should install that. Don't and don't report bugs against firmware 
packages unless you're really sure that the bug is in firmware rather than in the driver. This may seem obvious, but people do those things. Uh, adding features. Um, we do have some long-standing patches in the kernel, uh, in, in the Linux package. Um, we don't really want to add to those. Most of those really ought to get cleaned up and sent upstream, but it requires time to do that. Uh, so new features or should always be up, added upstream. As soon as they're accepted upstream, uh, we're happy to add them to, into uh, earlier versions that we, the earlier versions that we have in, in Debian, because we know if they're accepted upstream, then uh, as soon as we get to that new upstream version, we can drop that patch. So it's not adding to the uh, long-term burden of, of maintenance. Uh, I've just got a link there to the, the documentation on how to contribute to the kernel. Um, we would be very happy, well, I would be very happy uh, if uh, people would volunteer to uh, uh, work on those long-standing patches and get them into a state where, where they would be accepted upstream. So you reported a bug. Uh, upstream and it got fixed that's great uh, but quite often that fix isn't going to get into a, a uh, into a stable release of the kernel for several months uh, and if it's uh, if you the bug is, was actually found in a stable release rather than an unstable or testing then uh, that fix might not automatically get into a, a stable update at all. So you probably want to tell us what the fix is so that we can apply it now. If you can give a reference to the specific commit, if you know that, that is absolutely ideal. Uh, we can easily then uh, dig out that commit and, and add it. Uh, there's a patch tracking system used by uh, many of the kernel mailing lists called Patchwork, uh, and that will uh, gather together a patch and all the discussion about it. It also gathers together a patch series, which is in, useful if a fix takes multiple steps. Um, if you tell us that the patch was discussed on the mailing list and linked to an archive, that can work, but mailing list archives often mangle patches, so then we need to undo the mangling, so that takes longer uh, to deal with. If you send a, a patch, simply send a patch to the uh, bug tracker without any link to, oh, this is where it came from upstream, that's actually kind of a problem because uh, we don't know whether that's really the 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 uh, w what you say it is. If you have a, if it's a signed mail from a Debian developer, okay, yeah, we can probably trust it. Uh, if it's uh, uh, not a signed mail or it's from a Debian user, then we don't know. So we need to actually look upstream to see uh, this is this is uh, this is the version that got committed. If you want to do a backport. Uh, from the from upstream to whatever is the, the the current version, that's great. But include you need to include the upstream reference as well. Uh, talk to us as a team. Uh, I, I from time to time I will get mail directly to me saying, "Oh, there's this bug. Or can you help me with this? Or." Uh, uh, occasionally companies saying, oh, we want to update the support for, for our hardware. Um, they should not be mailing just me. They should always, uh, almost always, uh, be sending bug reports to the regular Debian bug tracker. Uh, and other mail should go to the, to the Debian kernel mailing list. Uh, we also have uh, a development ILC channel, hash Debian kernel on IRC.debian.org. 
and some some things some things can be discussed there. Usually, it's best to uh, to send longer messages to, uh, as email, though. The only reason you would want to not use the one of those public, uh, the only reason why you, why you should not use those public channels, is if you're discussing security issue that's uh, currently not public, uh, and shouldn't be made public until it's fixed. And in that case, uh, do contact me directly, but also the the Debian security team. And so, if you want to contribute to the uh, to the packaging, rather than if you don't if you're if you don't want to touch the the kernel code itself, but you want to contribute to the packaging, maybe you want to change the configuration, uh, maybe you want to make the packaging more uh, more suitable for uh, uh, for for use by downstream making derivatives. Uh, uh, if you simply want to uh, improve the packaging in Debian. Um, patches to that uh, are OK. Merge requests are wonderful. Um, since we moved to Salsa, uh, I'm going to take merge requests uh, through the GitLab software. I found that I can review and comment on and apply those changes pretty quickly. Uh, it also helps that we get notification for all the new merge requests on IRC, so that's pretty much uh, instant. If uh, if a team member is uh, looking at the IRC, IRC channel and is has time available, then they can deal with that uh, in minutes sometimes. So in the last, I looked, I checked back in the Git history and found in the last four weeks that we used Alioth, uh, there appears to be only one patch to the Linux package that wasn't either uh, picked from upstream or uh, done by a team member. Uh, in the last four weeks up to yesterday, we accepted 14 merge requests on Salsa. So this is this is a massive improvement to uh, uh, productivity of the uh, of the team and uh, our ability to accept outside contributions. Uh, once again, a reminder that feature patches for the uh, kernel code itself do need to go to upstream first. So uh, that's about it. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, about five minutes for questions. Hi, Ben. Thanks for the lecture. Um, I, I am wondering what are those long standing patches you mentioned? Can you give a few examples for that? Uh, one of the things uh, that actually requires the most work when moving to a new kernel version is we have a patch to, firstly, it adds, um, adds specific. Uh, log messages to the firmware loader. So or so whenever a firmware file is missing, it will always log that in a in the standard format. This was this is useful for the installer which uses that to detect uh missing firmware and warn you. Um and then because many drivers also log firmware errors in inconsistent ways, there's a second patch that removes those uh, redundant log messages. Uh, and that one keeps getting conflicts when we update. So really, uh, those those ought to get uh, uh, cleaned up a bit and, and sent upstream. Further questions? Well, if not, then mm -hmm. let's thank Ben again.